point to make that Boboka was exceptional in the Earth Spirit. I don't know if he can pull off the same performance on Ricky this game. It's uh, oh, He can start out by dying. That's one way to do it. Smoke breaks, Bobaka gets revealed, XXS, he's gonna skewer! Four Hero is back, is he gonna try and take this for the team? Bobaka is still revealed for the moment, but the dust, it just wore off. They have to plan down a Sentry Ward too, the Cogs push him out, S4 will get the kill, and isolates XXS! He's trying to run out, s 4 body blocking him up, they need a little bit more time to attack into him, they don't have the damage! So, XXS will be able to back out of here, even with the PMS, he takes a lot of damage, and it looks like he's gonna go all the way back to base to heal up. And Burning and Q are going to try and make the most out of this. They're advancing forward. They want to take this bounty rune away from Anna. Because they know Anna has no friends to help him. In fact, okay, now they do. S4 will come in. He'll call Burning back down again. Forcing Burning to actually contest for the rune. And then blink himself away to safety. But it did go the way of Anna. So it's just a two for two trade off for the ruins after all of that. Very nice start for OG though. Great play to move down there, get the dust off on the Ricky, get that kill. Um, forcing Magnus back to base, like you said, also makes a difference. And in addition to that, they also managed to force Burning Skill Blink level one. And this actually does make a bit of a difference in this matchup against Clockwork. Because what Clockwork wants to do is he wants to keep trying to cock the animation, get him out of mana. Mm -hmm. But it becomes like this this fist fight early on where AM will just try to run at you and mana break you down so you can't do it. At this point, the option isn't even there. So S4 can get a, quite a bit more out of this lane than than usual. Unless unless they actually just try lane and sit on his Clockwork. Just yeah. like game one. But then again, is, is S4 really that sad about that? He held the creep wave back far enough and Bobaka can't really easily kill off this Clockwork. Oh, that's good enough. Unfortunately for him, now his wave is pushing quite heavily. So he, he got like two-thirds of a level here, almost three-quarters. Um, it's just Clockwork has this problem that other offlaners don't, that he is really not that good at retiring into the jungle. Like, you can't really farm the jungle very well. And in addition to that, you're against a Ricky. It's it's not really an option. So he's going to try his best to at least just keep the enemy heroes here and try his best to get levels. Uh, he got a bit of experience there, but now he needs to be careful, actually. Doing some good damage here will survive. And that a defensive is... cog has to be triggered. Flask and Tango needs to be used here. Still keeping the Shrine available. I want to keep my eyes a little bit closer on... Well, on two lanes, in fact. XXS is going to skewer back GRX, getting in range of the Tier 1 tower. GRX popping a lot of damage for that. Uh, but it's mid lane. It's watching the DK play. Now, obviously, we know Anna's going to have a better time once he reaches his bottle. Uh, but OP kind of destroyed him in the mid game, in game 1. How does this how does this scenario play out here in game two? I think this lane matchup. I'm not a hundred percent sure how this usually goes. I think it's fairly even. Uh, it's hard for Storm to harass Dragon Knight out entirely. And yes, maybe you hit a Static Remnant once in a while on him, or at least the Overload. But uh, Dragon Knight can of course lower your damage a lot with Breathe Fire. And th th at the end of the day, this should be like pretty even. You know, there's, there's a slight lead for Storm, but he's also pushing in, so there's more creeps coming on his way. Um, overall. Just fine. Uh, as far as mid-game goes, Storm versus Dragonite is, is a very volatile matchup, where if Storm gets the jump on DK and pulls him into his team and then kill him off, that's great. If he can't, Dragonite has one of the best, better stuns against Storm Spirit. It's very fast, used to be instant, um, but still is a very quick stun. And if you get caught off guard by that as, as Storm, you could just get killed off by a lot of things in this game. Oh no, 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 Bobica. He's killed many couriers in his time, and if he gets this one, the bottle will be delivered to Anna. The he courier did get the will still die, so there's no ferrying available for Anna. And Jirax actually just took the Invis rune as the Monkey King. Bouncing himself away. So a lot of good gold. Of course, as always, it is a way less significant loss to lose a ground courier than a flying one. He hit the scan. Uh, ground courier gives no experience, and... Oh, actually triggered us. Yeah, Jirax wants to go on Bobica. The last second of that Radiant scan revealed him, and Jirax is trying to do as much damage as he possibly can to kill off this Ricky, and He's he gonna get will him. have enough. Jirax able to solo kill off Bobica. And this Ricky Maru, the presence, if, if you don't count the courier kill, is actually pretty minimal on the map. Jingo Master is pretty good skill when you hit four times. <laughs> it's a lot of damage. The real fall position. <laughs> That was kind of crazy. I actually didn't think he was going to be able to solo kill him, but just enough time. So, well, let's have a look at the side lanes a little bit. So, No Tail and Burning are both more or less free farming, and this is a classic matchup where both heroes actually have kill potential on each other. There's, it depends on a couple of conditions in the mid game. Uh, if the Spectre has any sort of setup on the AM, where AM is locked down, she can kill him really, really fast with Desolate with a Manta style. 
And on the other hand, if AM gets the jump on Spectre with an Abyssal Blade, he can burn all of her mana before she even gets the Haunt off. So it is it is one of those matchups where I feel like rather than the carries, it's about how the other cores are doing. Like if Storm can set up the, the Antimage for a good game, or if, if the Dragonite can put enough pressure that Spectre can keep farming like this and reach her items. And so far... So far, pretty even overall, I would say. It may start to tilt a Across little bit. Board. You look at what Bur in Burning's built. Like he's going no boots, got the PMS, and he's got Hand of Midas ready to go. If he wants to, in fact, that's exactly what he's done. He's he just bought building. the recipe, and it's coming in the backpack of the courier. That's funny. This uh, we were calling this a TI one matchup, right? Between the carries. Mm -hmm. This this anti mage Midas. I know Burning did it in a recent game, but apart from that, I can't remember seeing it in an official game since. Kvost did in like the defense 2 or something. Like it's been really long time since people bought Manta or sorry, uh, Midas on AM. So interesting. Um, maybe tells us a lot about how teams perceive this patch. That it it just doesn't go as fast right now anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's pretty bold if you think about it. He's going for a Midas AM build up against a team with Dragon Knight, which you know usually want to push towers fast. But yes, just I, doesn't feel threatened enough. I'd love to agree with you to, with with your point, but at the same time, like you look at the at the kill count that came in from game one, yeah. everyone was going Midas, and we're still going at least two three kills a minute. Absolutely. So it's like the pace of the push game has slowed down, but they're still they're still so fighting, much more brawling. Definitely still fighting. And thanks to Anna having that Sentry Ward, which was planted down previously by Jirax. They know what's coming his way, and they've managed to... Okay, did he really... He, he's actually quelling blading through all the trees near him, so Jirax has only got one tree to work with. Both Boboka and Jirax have very low levels. Uh, Jirax is closing in on level 3 minutes. This Bob Boboka just got level 2, so... Uh, the four positions in this game will be a little bit quieter, probably, than the last game where Boboka kind of is, just took over the game. Is Jirax actually trying to hide himself inside the rune? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> look, like, there's a haste! <laughs> uh, haste runes to the... Like, you need to get the perfect rotation time to make that work. <laughs> Which one is real, the static one or the moving one? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you try and click both of them. <laughs> oh, looks um, like he at least secured the rune for Ana there. Or actually, rather, he took it himself. I guess Ana didn't want it. They, maybe they see some play potential here, but this kill is very difficult. They're waiting for Jerex to hit level 3 so they have that boundless, but it's only... It's such a short duration stun, 0.4 on level 1. I don't really... This, this play, in my mind, doesn't really exist. It doesn't, but the fact that supports aren't there for Invictus Gaming, it still gives the confidence He's for getting information to play aggressive. And yeah. maybe this is also the time when Jirax needs to back out. Like, yeah, he doesn't have level 3. Okay, maybe with Phoenix here, they start the attack. You've got the Blink Strike, uh, so uh, the Blink, so you can get away that way, but Jirax pounces forward, the rocket will connect, and Phoenix, do you want to connect oh, they got haunt with now. a Spectral Haunt? Burning isolated, but he's able to jump away, but the Spirits fly, needs to hit the target, Burning dodges two so far. Watch the Fancy Feet go three, four, he dodges all of them. We've got Michael Flatley, Lord of the Farm, right here on the top lane. He could actually even have been cocky there and gone for the kill on Fly if he wanted to. <laughs> That's maybe a bit extreme, but uh, Fly was out of his spells. And he had a creep wave on him, but burning, just escaping that, gonna be very happy with that. Uh, Storm Spirit's now gonna be able to kill off Fly, so yeah. OP burns the last bit of his mana he had to do so. No tell actually got kind of lucky, because he, he jumped back down to his illusion uh, on the bottom lane, and was able to get back into the farm without being stuck up on top. How much did Ana do with this? So whenever whenever you look at a Dragon Knight mid, there's the big moment for Dragon Knight, the first big moment in the game, the, the hero is pretty stale in the start. You're just a static laner, you're just farming, maybe you get a kill if you get some great rotation, but mostly most of the time you can't do it alone. So you wait for level 6, and then you want to try to push the tower. Yeah. How much did he get out of this dragon farm? He managed to get half a tower while Storm was gone. They've rotated in the silencer to leech the lane. Um, he, got a, he got a dead of a quarter. That's, that's pretty alright, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, that's always the threat when you're playing against Dragon Knight and you leave your lane. This is, this is a thing you have to take into account. And IG might have been caught a little off guard. You generally don't want to give this much health for a kill on a support. Uh, I would say if hit fly got it's the choice, the coming in. he would take this trade any day that he gives up his life for two-thirds of a mid-tower this early in the game. Is OP ready to go? Bobakus managed to find fly. But he's got he's got one 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 at the moment. So we could potentially get the has double damage on Ricky for a little bit. Anna? Okay, OP gets a little bit of a wrong jump, and then the sprites oh, actually hit very the target perfectly, nice. make it so difficult to kill off Anna. So Icarus died for Bobaka as well as Q, and not very healthy. And with a battery assault from S4, he's gonna find this kill a little bit more mana. One second now, he's got the hook shot up. S4 goes in deep, finds a kill on Q. 
And there is nothing Bovica can do about that one, apart from maybe snipe off Anna, but no, Anna back into dragon form. He wants to push the lane. Sick play by Fly there. That was kind of made up for the four he missed in a row by hitting a triple. <laughs> <laughs> they, they needed that too. If he, if he hits like one or two targets there, I think Anna will die. But Ricky couldn't make use of his double damage. He had no attack speed at all. And like you said, this tower... If he gets one more hit in, this tower is, is down. Yeah, he's being a bit cautious here. He's though. got 14 one charges, so he knows he's safe. Fly even steals the bounty rune away from the Riki. This is the... Usually goes the other way around. No tell wants to fight. He's got Spectral Horn available and wants to try and come out. And here oh, it comes. Fly, Fly got gets silenced. silenced up, but No tell. He actually focuses on the Q instead. So while Fly might be down, No tell needs one more attack to get the kill on Q. With S4 right behind him, Bobica also has to run out. But it guarantees the last hit on the tower in the mid lane for No tail. In fact, he's the man to take it. And he went for an early, like, not even phase boots, it's just that earn build onto the spec. <laughs> This game, this game definitely looks better for OG than the first one did here in the early game. Uh, getting a couple of good kills, getting the first tier one tower. Uh, they're still slightly behind on experience, and I think they even more or less evened out the gold. But just slowly but steadily, they're going to take away this map from IG. If if Ricky can't really get any bigger impact than this over the next short amount of time, there will be another tier one falling, whether it's bottom or top. That. Uh, that OG choose to go for is Jirax, he's going to dust over on Bobica. The sentry ward revealed him, so Bobica has to actually blink himself into the creep wave. But the stuns are available, and Anna with a haste rune runs up and basically breathes on him. This definitely looks like an OG that have done their research on how to deal with this hero. Um, in comparison to how much Bobica more. dominated... XXS actually is, is in trouble at the moment. A hookshot's available for S4, able to hit it, and that's locking him in. Skura was already triggered. And there's no point throwing out the RP at that point. This is why Clockwork is so good against Magnus. Um, if you can force him to skewer before you hookshot, it's a very easy hit because it takes quite a while to skewer, so you can't turn. Um, and in a, apart from that, in the mid game, if you're scared of a blink mag, you, if you hit him with a rocket and you hook on him, and sure, he skewers you both away, you just have this like weird side battle that has very minimal impact on the rest of the fight. But it has a lot of impact because there's no RP, and you're often willing to trade your Clockwork away for that, just keeping both heroes out of the fight. Good stuff from OG. This top tower is actually close to falling now with uh, this rotation from Ana. This is exactly how you should play Dragon Knight in almost every single game. One tower to the next to the next. Every time your ulti comes off cooldown, force a team fight or force a push. And Ricky is just not a hero right now. I think that's the problem. They've dealt with him so well this game in comparison to the games at DAC that Bobuka is level 4, minute 12. And I think the Tome has already been used by Silencer to get his level almost 7. So they really... They, IG are kind of forced to slow the game down because of the nature of how, in my opinion, greedy their draft is. Their two cores are, or the, all three of their cores actually are very item dependent. Anti-Mage, Storm, and Magnus need to farm. And that means if the supports aren't making plays, seriously, how many plays are you going to make in a silencer? Well, who's left? The one guy that got hard countered is left to make your plays. There's just not plays happening right now. S4 mixed, missed his hook shot, so Q's able to retreat off the top lane. XXS may not be so lucky as they go to Spectral Haunt quickly into the dagger. They know Magnus has that skill, but very difficult to do. He has to RP, but the breathe fire from Anna's in range. So RP now goes down. That's 100 and 112 seconds before it's going to come back off cooldown. He'll probably have it by the time he's got the money for his blink dagger. A lot of issues when you lose such big team fight. OG can now pressure once again. Dragon forms off cooldown in 12 seconds time with the double damage rune. If they want top tower, they can probably take it. But Burning is bailed out. He's gone bottom lane to add pressure to the tier 1 tower of the safe lane of OG. The way I see it, there's, this is the only way IG can play this game right now with a win condition. If, if they don't split push like this with Anti-Mage, it's just not going to happen. Like, team fights right now in, are borderline impossible un, until Mag at least has a blink. And even then, do they actually have the damage to kill heroes? Uh, OG are fairly, fairly sustainable and have, of course, the counter engage of the Clockwork. And their course, both Dragon Knight and Spectre, are not easy kills anymore. So... You gotta, you gotta take it slow, split up the map, and try not to get picked off too much. The good news in that regard is, this Anti-Mage, once he gets like his first item that gives him a bit of tank ability, will be very hard for them to kill. What do they have? Hookshot, he can blink out after. Dragon Knight needs uh, he to, may not get to that point. point. Jirax, the hookshot comes in, and Jirax follows up on the stun. It was burning, trying to just farm with a little bit of empower those Ancients. But when that happens, Anna's pressuring the bottom lane. Well, he doesn't have his tank ability item yet, Toby. No, so he doesn't. But he is very mortal right it, now. It questions, like, should you have gone for the Vanguard and used the Empower instead? It's a possibility. I feel like this Midas into Battle Fury with Empower is, like, 
ultra greedy <laughs> when you're playing against Dragon Knight lineups. So. Oh. I'm, I'm still not really that way, big of a fan. Espo is right behind him. He's got the battery no on the but it's going to cog him in, and no time will do the rest. Meanwhile, on bottom lane, Fly throwing out the sprites. XXS gets a jump away, but it's too much damage. Even Anna's attack follows him out. Q's got nowhere to survive, and Bobica's smoke screen doesn't really do anything. His damage into Fly, that'll do something. But Mr. 3 Aquila doesn't even have that much money, and GRX is ready to go again. No tell, that high movement speed with the phase boots, the tricks of the trade will buy a little bit of time, but GRX, a perfect moment, lands the stun, a quick blink up, but the urn charge is out, one attack from No tell, he doesn't see him, but the urn charge, oh. it ticks him down, he doesn't reach the shrine in time! OG kill after kill, they take the tier 1 tower on bottom lane, and S4's already setting up for the top lane. I, don't, I can't help but feel like this death scene is like when you try to get to an oasis in the desert and you just, you see it. You start having you see this the mirage? You have this Fata Morgana in your You'd be like, I got it, I got it. Yeah, unfortunate. Ricky doesn't make it. Well, if this, if this continues, then IG will be hitting a wall soon that they can't really climb anymore. Um... Unless they, Burning just plays elusive. They need this, but he, but they need this to, mag blink. He they actually need needs his Battle Fury in order to do that, because he can never sit next to the Magnus to get the buff. Yeah, and even with the Battle Fury, he is, he's exposed to die. He can die oh, to sure. a haunt of two stuns. They found the Bobrick up. The Sentry Wards are down. The Observer Wards saw Q coming in as well. So I was optimistic that that would work. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. But here they come. Dragonfall, Wolf cooldown, and Tier 2 tower. Middle lane, or they just smoke up? Blink Dagger plus Armlet on the DK. Where's the target? They don't have vision of anyone. You do have OP as well as XSS trying to farm the only safe place, which is currently OG's jungle. A Dusk goes out. They do not see Bobrika. They just see Q instead. Doesn't really have much more to offer, however, apart from his life. He did. Yeah, yeah. He did. Love this item from Ana. This is exactly what they need to do. Blink Dagger on Dragonite right now. It's, it's Shadow Blade or Blink. Either is good. Just... Go hunting, you know. Find find the storm, find the AM with any sort of backup plus a haunt. It's a kill. So this the map is just not safe anymore anywhere for for IG if if they don't have great vision out or if Ricky isn't providing very good scouting at the same time. It just passively limits the farm of burning that he needs to be so scared all the time. OG will now find the first two two of the game. The good thing for IG is that they have Ricky, so they get some they get wards out at the very least. Yep. Ricky's going to scan out the movement to the top lane. There's no tell. Burning needs to uh -oh. get out of here. But Jirax is waiting for him. Doesn't find the right opportunity, but no tell. Haunts him. Now the opportunity is ripe. And any mage. Oh, Burning! He blinks. Sass the TP through the trees. Oh. No tail. Damn, that was close. I think he ran out of phase. He lost the dagger phase mm -hmm. for a moment. So he couldn't continue in the straight line. I think he knew exactly where Burning was. Well, he, he made an absolute beeline for yeah. him. I mean, he was going on the right mark. Just narrowly surviving that. Did cost them a global silence, uh, but it was a trade-off for Haunt. So I think if you're IG and you dodge ganks like this, you're, you you have to be satisfied with that. There's not much more to hope for right now. Mid lane. Uh-oh. Uh, we'll be okay. Storm. Long jump. Uh-oh. Oh, not be okay at all. <laughs> yeah, the stun's there. He's almost got four hits. He's waiting. He's actually letting Notel get the last hit. They're pumping money into this spec. How close is he to Manta? So he has Yasha. There's nothing on the courier. He needs about 2,000. That is a game changer because then Dragon Knight and Spectre together can kill any hero on the map. I think even the Storm can be killed in a Dragon Knight stun alone if they insta haunt Manta. Uh, top lane, Baboka. No dust and no tail though. And no real follow up. It's bottom lane where OG were looking for an opening and there is one man hiding in the tree lines. It's Q. Would you actually? Would you believe it? Look, look at how many towers OG have taken. They've taken four towers to IG's one, and they're 12 kills ahead. Look at the graphs. That's actually unbelievable. You, you would expect it to be a hell of a lot more yes, in favor of OG. You but... would. It's a, it's an anti mage with Midas, Battle Fury, and Empower. Okay, you know mm. we will be farming fast, and OG are effectively but, trading farm for but kills. He's, he's not even that far ahead of the DK. Like if you balance it out, no. like, like like the DK AAM are close, the Spec and the Storm are close. The Magnus and the Clockwork are close. And the other thing is, in a way, yes, this Antimage is farmed, but his current value is not his net worth. Like, he, he can't trans... He can't use this 10k for anything. Yeah. So, yes, they're keeping up in farm, but in terms of actual, like, power ranking in this game, or whatever you want to call it, OG is at a clear first place with IG far down yep. on a second place. <laughs> uh, but but what, what Burning gets out of this is, yes. is the ability to flash farm. Yes. Eventually, Burning will be getting big items. Anna. 
He is, he is actually uh, Ricky Mara with the moment, but the skewer, I don't think XSS realized he's picking up two. The breeze fire is available with a blink forward. He needs a dragon tail as well, and then the ulti. Nope, they're just going to allow on your Rex. Well, I suppose kill secure. Uh, ended up being a little bit more expensive than it had to. Ana could have blink stunned him and then breathe fire, and then they don't even need to use haunt or dragon form. So yeah. a bit of a mistake there, which, you know, it's it's forgivable, right? They still get the kill. But using big cooldowns is a big deal. This yep. is this is downtime. Especially for when you do this now. Like, you move yourself into what's Roshan. You don't have that spectral haunt available. This is pretty risky, actually. I don't, I don't think it's that easy. If IG get an idea that this is happening and they know what abilities but are do, cooldown... But do they contest it? We're just talking about, like, any mage being basically paper at the moment can they do it unless you get a huge rp like the pressure on uh, xs is massive they either have no idea it's happening or they don't want to contest the he thing, doesn't, the thing like i'm wondering dagger. so what ig could do if they knew this was happening they could move storm outside the pit and start placing static remnants and try to get an, some intel on what's happening and if they get any sort of just decent jump they could pounce on it with magnus and storm maybe get a kill maybe steal the roche that, that's what I mean. Like, it's not like OG are not going to be able to kill this Roche, but it could fail. It could be stolen. Or, you see, Ana actually dropped down to oh, order the RP. They commit. Yeah. They just want the one quick pick off over on Jirax. He was right on top of an observer, on, on top of an observer ward. Minus two. <laughs> Minus two, plus two. Minus two. Glass is half full, Sin. Yep. It's technically plus four on Q. No, it's technically minus two and plus two, but not plus four on Q. I mean, yes, he has four now, but not that kill total. Yeah. In total, he has plus four. I wonder who stole the int from the first place. First kill, I don't know. You know you, I've, we've been oh, waiting it, for it, that. It, twist, it twist. can only be fly. He has all the other deaths. <laughs> <laughs> so that's answered there. Well, uh, so... Out of 506 mana pool. That's so all of perfect. OG's cores are deathless in this game, and this is a totally different story playing Clockwork under these conditions than in the first game where, oh, where S4 got countered a lot. S4, that's a very quick blink away. Thanks to the Observer Ward this down. That's a four. There's a reason why you would pick him clockwork time and time again, even if it doesn't work. This that was a initiation. really nice hook. He is the perfect hooker. I don't actually think he had vision for that even. He just guessed based on the trajectory of the... There was the, the one observer ward. They yeah, he, he saw... He didn't see it properly. I think he didn't even see the skewer start. I think he was in the fog already when he did that. And it, it was just a guess. And sometimes you guess right. Um, what I was getting at with the clockwork is, in comparison to game number one, this game clockwork is farmed. And this hero is actually really strong with farm. Just, he buys utility items that make him tanky and oh. he can brawl very well. Jerex. Uh, Jerex. Oh. Did anyone bring reveal? Oh. Oh dear. <laughs> He's just a shadow amulet. He's been playing around with it. Now he goes for the Wukong command. Bobaka, trick to the trade. Who's got the better circle right now? Oh. He's like, for the stun! It connects on Bobaka! The stun rays out, so Fly will heal up. Jira Hacksman is so close! That was actually crazy close. You know, when Ricky used his blink strike, you end in behind the target. But he still got hit by that outward going arc of Boundless Strike, so... Didn't manage to find that pick that he would have loved to have there. And by the way, it looks like Bobuka has changed his item build this game. Realized when you're being crushed, maybe you shouldn't go for three Rings of Aquila. This time he's going for a fast Yasha. Ana going to cruise by here and kill Q with a Haystrin. Mm -hmm. But and so, he can go down. The, the Observer was watching XXS blink himself over and with a Haystrin. Ana can catch up and he goes into the ulti form. This is a bit he of wants a... to be skewered. He's actually in a position where he's forcing XXS to go into the river by blocking his path out in the bottom lane. So, what do you think IG are thinking right now? Do you think they Fun. feel like they're... No, do you think they feel like they're losing the game? Like, this game is getting out of control. They're at 24, no. they've taken out towers. You've, you've got burning on 13,000 net worth. They're don't... reaching a point where he's going to be able just to split push the crap out of this game. I think they're okay with this for the moment. Because they also know with, with Magnus, you've got high ground defense. They you've do? just got to play crafty. I can't remember the last time I've seen a game with this big of a disparity in kills and towers that is even on net worth. It's like really, really unusual that you have games like this. And we can we can obviously have a, have a 300 net worth advantage being 24 behind. We can obviously see the graphs and yeah. we can see how the net worth is distributed. But IG don't have access to that information. So it, like I was saying, it's kind of a mental game. Like how how. How do you feel like the game is going to make your decisions? Do you feel like you have to fight? Do you feel like you can keep split pushing like this and keep... They've been hemorrhaging kills for the last 10 or 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like, at some point, do you feel like it's too much? Or... Burning's like, Burning. guy, I'm farming, guys. It's cool, you know? That's, that's going to be your indicator. You basically just ask Burning every five minutes, Hey, how you doing? <laughs> and he's like, farming. 
I'm yeah. good, man. Have you died recently? No, I'm zero for one. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's our problem? Oh, wait, you guys are having issues? I didn't notice. He can obviously <laughs> see the, the, the information he does have access to is the level. He can see on the level chart that he's level 18 and the highest enemy hero is level 17 on the Dragon Knight who got like a billion kills, a Roche kill and towers and everything. He's 6 or 5 on that, on that DK. He's a lot ahead of Spectre and that's kind of indicative of his... his you know, how he's playing against his counterpart. He knows he's far ahead of Spectre. AM will be far ahead of Spectre if both heroes are just farming. So... But are you still happy with this? We're still talking about going into a, uh, up against a late-game spec. That's... I think this this game can be won by both teams at 100 minutes in. Like, this is the mm -hmm. type of game where it all comes down to who gets the jump and how the items are distributed. This AM will obviously cap out at some point, and so will Spectre, but who has the better follow-up? Like, super late game? I think Storm Spirit is an amazing hero when it's 6-slotted. Dragon Knight's pretty good too, but there's always that X-factor of the Magnus versus a Clockwork later. Okay, like, is Boba Capacient enough for this? The Courier is on its way out. Now, it's going to be buying up the Assault Curass of the Dragon Knight. In fact, definitely. it's going to have the entire thing on it if he's just patient enough. So he attacks it oh. once, a little too early, but the Courier didn't react. And that means... Oh, hook shot. Is down. Oh, he hit the, the camp. Shot actually hit the camp, so he doesn't reach Bobica, and the dust is too far away. Bobica just makes a break for the tree line. TP's out, and space has been created. This is the biggest kill he can find on the map. Uh, it slows down OG's item progression by three minutes on the Dragon Knight. He had a full AC that he now has to wait for, for mm -hmm. another two and a half. Um, he forced a rotation from Clockwork, who wasted a dust. And the kill itself is... Ah, uh, okay, if he could have killed the Dragon Knight, that would have been better, or the Spectre, but that doesn't really seem to be happening right now, so easily way more valuable than killing off a random stray support, for example, would Boba managed to accomplish there. Do, do you like his build? Like, like last time we saw him... Play, he's going Aghanims. He's actually going Aghanims set through all the Uh We, we see him do Diffuser Blade. He went for the Master Ring of Aquila into Diffuser Blade last time around. This time, it's the Ags Ricky. What's, what's he doing with this? Fog was actually... I think it was Fog who mentioned this on the panel. It was, I'm pretty sure that this is a possibility. And he almost immediately shouted down himself like, there's no way this is going to happen, right? <laughs> so this is one of the acts I think I have never seen in play in a single game. But the way I believe it works is that you... It's like in Fest, right? You jump into an ally and you can use your abilities inside that ally. Is that correct? Like you can use Tricks of the Trade inside the Storm. You can use Smoke Screen. That's a good question. For now, we'll watch OP jump away. Global Silence came out, so the Spectral Haunt doesn't find its opening. Bobica, he's just jumping out of there. They didn't get the reveal once again. No detection. Rocket will fly in, but where is your vision? Another oh, those trees, he's out of range of it again. This is exactly what happened to OG during the DAC final. It's, it's an unbeatable, invisible force that you're paranoid about. Really, really great escape here. He can TP out whenever he wants. He's sticking around just for fun, you know? Hmm, I wonder if they put a sentry to. Let's check. All right, he's up. So I believe the idea is that he will be casting his spells from inside the storm. So storm can act, act like a vehicle. So even if the enemy team has good detection down, Ricky will still be able to get off all his spells. I believe so. I mean, it is called pocket Ricky, right? It's all about. So smoke up on top lane. XXS's love a kill. And the best one that could get is Anna. And that's one hell of a kill. So Bobica has to be the vision. Right now they don't see anyone in the tree lines, but look where he goes. They know they're going to find him. Anna, tricks of the trade, make sure he cannot blink himself out. Pull him back. Jurek's going to himself a three-man stun, but Anna, you can't toggle that. Huge kill. And that's this is Bobica who gets the kill. The money towards the great Aghanim Scepter I can't is believe starting I'm, to be piled in. I can't believe I'm saying that, but that kill is Ricky's point booster. <laughs> hey! Unusual. So, well... I had my doubts about burning. I shouldn't have, I guess. He has been able to completely oh, dodge. Oh, look at that. Oh. That's now Ricky That's a little bit further away from his point booster. Oh, he almost got his point booster. He was I, sure. It still sounds so weird to me to even say that. <laughs> if, if, he sold his, uh, if he sold his calling blade, he would have a chance, but you're up against Monkey King. You ain't selling that. But I want to point out, you know, when, when, Anti when it comes to anti and you look at the CS, and it's like, oh, he has more than 10 CS per minute, that's great. The thing that's really impressive to me in this game is that Burning has only died once out of 21 kills, and he's yep. playing against a lineup that does have kill potential on it until oh, he got this Manta. <gasps> oh, very Fly. close. You can hear the Mana Void going off, but it just didn't connect in time. And now, because he did get away with this ultra greedy build, now he's ramping up way faster than everyone else. He's, I, I don't he's know. at least 20k net worth. Wait, we're 28 minutes in, and the nearest to him is, is just shy of 13k. What's his GPM? Alright, 700. We're still good. I predicted 900 to 999. Don't tell me. 
Really? Yeah. Why would you do that when it could be an alchemist pick? Alchemist got nerfed a lot. He did, but you know one of them is going to be appearing somewhere. Yeah, but it still needs to get a thousand GPM. If you pick an alk, you don't automatically get a thousand GPM. That's like that's still a really good alk game. So, I think well, Burning might actually reach that point if this game goes on. He will be farming faster and faster. His GPM is ramping up more and more. At this point, 724. So he's closing in on doubling up the enemy cores. He's running in terms out of, of camps, GPM. but he's running out all the Yeah, that's, that's a problem that Antimage will obviously have in this patch compared to the past. Um, uh, nice D warding there from GRX. They've got the gem on him now. This is actually an extremely good Lincoln's pickup by Antimage. I love this. There's only one targeted ability on OG's lineup Dragon that is Tail. reliable, and that's Dragon Tail. Ten seconds until they might have to time. itemize against. They have a four staff on S4, so that could break the Lincolns. But it, you know, it, it makes the conditions to to kill him now are are a lot harder for OGs and me. Yeah. And now it's just split pushing bottom. And effectively, what IG has managed to do is, even though they've lost a lot of their map, lost a lot of control in the game in terms of having just having places to play. Burning has slowly but steadily avoided ganks, farmed up a lot, reached a position of power. Storm Spirit has kept up very nicely as well. He has pretty much the same net worth as Spectre and Dragonite on. Uh, on the dominating team in that sense. And now IG, if they do manage to get another item burning, I think it's go time. They're probably going to get like an Abyssal Blade and they'll want to fight an OG. Might just be feeling the heat right now. They look at this animation, they're like, damn, he is rich. We need to so do something about this. Get Aegis push, you've got the Assault Curas. You just try and take out a tier three tower. This is still really hard. Okay, if you try to go high ground with this Dragon Knight, what can happen? He doesn't have BKB, keep that in mind. Mm. So he can get Blink Skewered into Global and he dies under tier fours and they can kill him again. Yeah. There's actually no way that OG can get in and help him enough. So he also triggers his dragon form at the very, very start. Even if he comes back to life again, he's going to be. He doesn't have it. And in it, I uh, mean, in addition to that, there's this whole split push threat that they also need to deal with, and their wave clear is pretty bad. Like this OG lineup, how do they push out the creep which that burning sense? They have to send heroes. They have nothing. Arguably, rocket flare. It's it's good, but it's not enough. And S4 isn't even level 15 yet for the talent. So. IG has basically, with what in some ways couldn't really have been a worse early game, had done totally fine, actually. It's just burning things. Yep. It's burning things with their farm, everyone else helps create the space, and it's the intimidation. And like, it, how many times has oh, OG bottom, lost to the IG Magnus? is possibly getting out of oh, this haunt. He should be dying here. Why are they holding the haunt? Alright, they wait for his blink. They didn't want to haunt for them. Surprising. I think that was a free kill. At this point, these kills, no tails should definitely try to claim them, even if it costs a haunt. I don't, I don't think there's anything worth saving it for right now. They, they have the they Aegis. worried about the full push on top. But then again, yeah, you're right. He could have probably even... Uh, doesn't he have a TP? Oh, he actually doesn't have a TP. Uh, I don't know. Maybe miscommunication there. Maybe they thought they had him. Um, if he haunted into the bottom lane, he would have been right next to the shop for a TP. Oh, yeah. It, he's not going to die from one TP, though. There's no single hero on IT that can kill him apart from Antimage, and he was not in the neighborhood. You haunt... Okay. You, and you find out where he is. You were talking about it in like the first five, ten minutes about like the Animage build, like what does he get for the control? And Abyssal Blade was one of the big things you said. Now he got the Basher, but he's going for Butterfly next yeah. in his quick buy. That's good too. Both options are good. He just it's it's like a it, the two items have different strengths. Obviously, the the Abyssal would allow him to engage and try to kill off a, a key hero, whereas the Butterfly will make him way more sustainable in case he does get caught by a perfect execution from OG. Great against obviously both the Dragon Knight and Spectre. Neither hero really wants to buy an MKB at this point, so it will be very valuable in, for defensive purposes. Um, just wanted to say, by the way, this game kind of reminds me of there was a phase with Liquid, I think, where Kuroki played Ricky. Yeah. And the way the game went was that Kuro would die multiple times in the early game, gathering information, forcing out a lot of detection purchase, forcing rotations. And at the end of the day, it was like he could be 0 and 5, 0 and 6, 0 and 7 on Ricky, and you could have felt like he had a huge impact in the game just because of how much attention he dragged away. Well, he was it, feels like, it feels like the exact same game to me, honestly. This, this Ricky has been such a nuisance to OG, and they countered it, and they did well, but it gave space. It gave so much space to this anti-mage that's working out. Similar style we've seen from uh, a team like uh, Adfinim in the past, this tournament, obviously, mm -hmm. Mouse Sports, um, with, with maybe next time playing Ricky or Bounty Hunter. It, it, they used they used those heroes in Adfinim to give Madara a good game on his hard carry Slark. Oh, for let's example. jump forward. They get the dust off on Bobrika. They were trying yeah. to give him the farm. It was even an empowered Ricky jumping in and taking out a full Kareet wave up on top. They're trying to get him his Aghanim scepter. The thing about this is that OG have no idea what he's buying. 
Uh, they, if he, he kept a secret because if he bought, if he bought the point boost, yeah. he would have revealed it. They, he hasn't shown any component. So what will happen eventually when he gets this Aghanims is that Storm will jump in. They will use their abilities, and OG will probably get really confused in the first fight, like trying to find the Ricky. And that's a problem. Yeah, that is a problem. And uh, I mean, it's oh. nah, he was having a bit of a guess. Q was there doing the de-warding, Magnus was in the neighborhood, but uh, the line was wrong. And this... Burning's almost done. In fact, if he sells the mines, he's actually done them. This is a nicely educational game of why when people look at games and they only look at the kill score and they're like... They, they look at that and they decide who's leading the game, it can be extremely misleading. Like, every other metric than gold and just creep kills right now is pointing in OG's favor. They have higher kills, they have the Roshan. They've taken all tier two towers apart from one. They are, they are, they are losing this game right now. They are yeah. losing it really hard, actually. <laughs> Look at that net worth. It's just, it's still going the way of IG. And there was never really a point where you could say, like, OG had real control over this game. Even with the kills, even with the jump arounds, it felt like it was happening with the DK. But IG perfectly slowed it up. They split pushed it out. And OG never really got the opportunity they were searching for. And this is th this to me is just out. Yeah, Burning's gonna get out of that. I think. Oh, oh they might try for a hook. He actually got himself out of the Wukong command, jumped down. Ah, Jirax has it with the Gemma True Sight. There's nowhere to hide and uh, that's no Ricky for 42 seconds. I might be able to get a tower, but Invictus effectively managed to completely delay OG for five minutes so this Aegis had no impact at all. Mm -hmm. They didn't get a single tower with it because of the split push and OG had to defend. Very nice to done, done like this. This is world-class play, in my opinion, from, from IG. <laughs> You're looking at a team that has five kills. They're playing an amazing game. Like <laughs> This is super, super good stuff from them. And OG are playing great as well. They're just... Their lineup is hitting its has hit its point of weakness already. Like they haven't been able to get enough out of it. But when you look at the flow of the game, I don't feel like they've just missed an obvious and easy opportunity to win the game. Like they're not playing bad Dota. It's just now, now the only they're just getting out missed was not haunting for the Magnus, and that yeah. was it. Like everything else has been according to according to plan. It's just IG have slowed up their plan. Now the opportunity is Jurax. Hiding under the cover of the Shadow Blade, hook shock forward. The Spectral Illusion to actually tank most of it, but the Spectral Haunt gets them closer. Q will go down. This is the big opportunity OG were looking for. They need these kills. OP so low on mana, he can Bloodstone deny himself if he wants to. The Dragon Tail stun. Anna holding in position. Is there a fourth off? Is there something? There's a Lincoln Spear. Anna jumping inside. There's your Bloodstone denial and burning. Wants to keep fighting him. The fourth staff is there, but the RP is better. Catching out too. Now you can jump in before Ricker got stunned up. He couldn't follow through. It's a Ricky Maru, neither could Burning. No man to reveal, but the Lincoln Spear triggered. He has to bounce back to his tier 3 tower. They killed the Dragon Knight. That's base defended easily. OG can't do anything with this Dragon Knight dead. And Burning back to pushing and farming again. That was a, ni a nice move from OG, though, here. Uh, finding this pick off. And they, in a way, you know, a moment ago when I said they've, they've played a good game, I would have liked to see a bit more hunger in this when it comes to killing the cores. It, it's not easy, you know. In a way, it's... It, it doesn't sound too hard when you have like Clockwork Hookshot and Spectral Haunt, but the way IG has managed to push out these lanes and make the kills difficult, um, it, it's it's not that easy for OG, but I, there, there must have been a couple of times where they had a chance, at least, of going on this AM, and it might have failed, you know, it, maybe they try it and it doesn't work, but if you don't try at all, it just it strategically feels inevitable that this will happen, like if, if they don't catch Burning ever, OG has played enough Dota to know that this is happening, and they know what kind of caliber team they're facing. So yeah, this is this this will happen against any top team in the world that gets to play like this with Anti Mage and Magnus eventually. Um, and and at this point, it, it's just it's really difficult. I think that last fight is almost the best they can hope for. They got a great Haunt, they got the hook shot in, they followed through with the Specter, uh, yeah, with the Specter and the the Dragon Knight getting great damage off. Uh, the Boundless Strike from Jerax was pretty much perfect. And still, they ended up trading, what was it, Dragon Knight for the two poor supports and yeah. ultimately the Magnus, I believe, they did get. Uh, or, or was it Storm? It was Storm for Bloodstone Suicide. Yeah, Storm yeah. for Suicide. Yeah. So, but that, it, it was you, definitely good. It, it was good. But marginal change. IG still got some pretty good hits off. Like, the fact you got that RP to happen, yeah, GRX made a lot of space. But I think both sides are getting a lot of work done. And GRX is, again, I, with this gem of true side, They've managed to bypass the Ricky. Burning jumps over. 
Kyrax doesn't find his opening, instead he finds the Ricky. Hits the perfect stun. A quick hook shot from S4. And Anna wants to go in deeper, but the RP is out. The global silence. Anna can't fight this one. Or can he? Where's the damage? Burning with a double kill. He'll end the streak. You'll go into the Nova. This needs to create space. It's not perfectly on top of the hill, but it's close enough. IG will have to bail out. And the stun, it connects on the silencer. Two for two trade up. But again, you've got no DK. No tell doesn't want to fight this one. In fact, none of OG want to. This combination of spells is very, very nice, and something classic that we've seen Fly apply in a lot of his drafts. We've seen all oh, he is dead. In perfectly. Great ward. Instant Abyssal Blade trigger as well, so there's no way for Fly to, to have any chance to jump out of that. When and Fly, three heroes down with only one buyback. When Fly picks Phoenix, they like to have a secondary teamfight hero that sets up nicely with the Supernova. In this case, it's Wukong's command with the Basher. We've seen them do it with Trend Protector, with Overgrowth. We've seen them do it with Earth Spirit, with all of his combination of sounds and stun. Uh, it's it's a nice combo to see him play there, it's just too late. It's It's been too hard for them to find oh, the, the conditions stun? to do it. Burning doesn't even need to do a Bissell Blade then. The Gem of True Sight is on the deck. OP will take it. I don't think Jurex really meant to hold on to the Gem of True Sight when he went in for that suicidal play. But it was a first hit bash from Burning. So you lose Gem, you lose your Monkey King, and you just lost your entire bottom rack. Yep, he has a higher net worth than Dragon Knight and Spectre combined at this point. So... He's actually maxed out. He could get travels two and a moon shard. Uh, I think we're going to see him buy the shard right now. And there Where's it is. Oh, I'm, I'm looking okay. forward to seeing okay. this. Let's, let's watch him. Sadly, at this point, it's probably not going to be the deciding factor. He's, it's just going to be like the icing even, on the cake. He's not even moving it. Uh, he's it. Okay, now, now it's in there. And now eat it. You can't eat it. <laughs> so, go on. Do a Bobaka. Rokan's okay. up and available. Alright, so just what Tricks of the Trade does increases duration and allows you to target an allied hero hiding within them for the duration. Scepter bonus duration plus four seconds. So Tricks of the Trade lasts currently nine seconds? Really? It sounds right, but that's a long time. That that is a really long time actually. Well, I wanna see it. Let's go. Yeah, look at a fight. Let him jump in. Tobik is like, wait for me! Oh, fly! Don't take me! Orca's up, they jump in quickly. Anna actually jumps into force. It's good splash damage. Magnus will fall. Frig is the RP off with the mana void. It's so much damage onto the DK. He can't survive it. Jurex has to go into the Wukong command. Has to get the double stun. Both the Ricky plus all spirit caught out. S4 couldn't create the space, however, even with the cogs. A triple kill for burning. And that may be all she wrote. Invictus Gaming have all of the power, aka they have the burning. Looking to push him through the mid. Easy bashes onto the spec. They will actually retreat. No big ultimates available left anymore. They forced two buybacks and three of their heroes are low health. That's more than good enough. Uh, we did get to see the Tricks of the Trade there, by the way. He used it on the Magnus, who unfortunately didn't get to use RP and did die, but Tricks of the Trade continues even when the host dies, so... Uh, Boboca was spinning there for a good like seven or eight seconds, so yeah, I guess so. You're making him sound like a parasite. Th this is. <laughs> Look at him. What do you think? <laughs> he's a freaking. He's a, he's a gola wolf now? A parasite, yeah. Uh, or OG, less. where are you gonna head? Like, Roshan is up, and this may be like their hallelujah play at the moment. They're probably thinking IG are in there doing it. Jurax with the Shadow Blade. Just creeping around the back. Remember that RP is still available and a big pick if they can take it. Tricks of the Trade is out. Hooks on him from S4. He's creating space. He's locked no tell inside the cogs. Combining him with the Nova. Burning. He'll have to blink away. Able to do so. It's the Nova ineffective. And you've already lost no tell. The RP. Blink skewer. Dragging back the Dragon Knight. And that will be the game. They've lost two of their big heroes with no buybacks available. The bottom wave is pushing in. Burning will help kill off Roshan, but he doesn't even need the Aegis at this point of the game. Well, they're going to throw this on the Storm Spirits. Great Aegis carrier. Jarek's doing his best here. Oh, Barbara can't be new! He had the Quali Blade out, he jumped up, he went for the silence, and you'll lose Jirax as well! You don't Monkey King, Bovaka. It just doesn't happen. He's... he's... He's kind of playing, when he's playing against Monkey King, it seems like, for his team at least, he's always thinking about the Monkey King. Yeah. Um, just thinking, what would I do myself in this position? And then just already 
preparing for the counterplay in case it is indeed there, because he can easily put himself in, in Jarek's shoes in this game. And yeah, what can you say? IG. Too good. Excellent game from them. That there isn't really much more to say about it. If you can hemorrhage this many kills and it still feels like you're in control of the game and you're doing it all with a purpose, it just shows that you have a really sound strategy and a game plan and you're executing it. This was... he's, he's, he's even using his tricks of the trade right now on OP. OP, he's gonna jump in. That's a fresh bash of this out as well. Still doing the damage. The smoke screen perfect on top of Fly. OP can't finish the job, but in fact now, no tell. Finding one, they're looking for another one. OP on the run, not a lot of mana, but the, the skewer out from XXS. The Aegis Immortal will trigger, burning, blinks away to safety. Still a lot of Spectres on the field, but OP, the mana is up. Ball Lightning's away to safety. S4 was the one that actually gave No-Tail the space by hooking into the back lines. Maybe that Storm Jump was a little cocky. Yeah. Arguably. I, I think also... But he ends up only losing his pocket, Ricky, so... Like, he, he used, yeah. what, four seconds? Four and a half seconds of the tricks of the trade just standing in front of the towers? I think and so. They jumped in? They, they wasted a bit of the time on it. But they kind of have a really big buffer at this point. And I think something to think about in this game, like... For all intents and purposes, this game should be over by now. It's yes. an almost impossible comeback for OG with how far behind they are. So, looking forward for them, I think... Based on what we've seen today, this is the best team. IG. I yes. I think this has been two outstanding games from them. So It also feels like though IG is OG's kryptonite. Exactly. It's It seems to be a bad matchup for them, and I don't think OG looked bad in this game, to be honest. I, I actually think they looked pretty damn good for a big portion of the game. It's just... They were outclassed by a bit, but it's still, if you, if you want to look forward in the Swiss format, like who is expected to go further, I think OG will drop this game, but almost no matter who they face in the mid, they will be the favorites yeah. ba based on this game. And arguably, maybe game one wasn't as hot, but still there were some, some good fight in that as well. So um, IG are just looking, in this series, are just looking on another level. Well, IG now have the tankiest of all anti mages 3.5k life, he picked up the heart, traded out his BTs for this, and Storm Spirit, the long jump in once again, with the tricks of the trade, the stun, the up, he is out, hookshot space is being created, but nowhere near enough, it is all in favor of IG, Ghost will bite sometime for S4, but he still goes down to Burning, who is beyond godlike, Chirax let the ulti out, OP will deny himself up, actually giving a little more life to Bobo, could have survived just that little bit longer, skill from XXS, off target, where's your buybacks, Where's your survivor building? No tell. Try and jump around, but he knows it's completely futile. It's more style points at the end. Invictus Gaming will wipe OG just like the DAC finals. If this one was only a best of three. Is that laughing there? Is that OP? <laughs> it's the entire team. They're having yeah, a great having time. time. So obviously when you when you look at this game in retrospect, it just looks like it was the burning show, but I think it's important to understand how big of a team effort this is, even though he's ending up sitting on like sixty percent of their team's net worth or whatever. They they all played very solidly with the limited tools that they had. A lot of other teams will crumble under pressure here after this losing their towers and just lose control of the map, but mm -hmm. they kept staying constructive. What do we have? What can we do? What do we need to achieve? And they worked 